the Lord has made. And we are here to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We are certainly excited and we are elated that the Lord has allowed us to gather together in his name. When there are two or three gathered in his name, he is in the midst of us. We are certainly excited for what the Lord, ha Lord has in store for us today. Is anyone excited today to hear the word of the Lord, to gather together just to bless his name right where you are? If you can take a few moments to clap your hands and we're just going to rejoice with them that rejoice. We're going to be encouraged in this space and time in this moment, knowing that God is still in the blessing business. To our virtual viewers, we thank you once again for meeting us here as we bless the name of the Lord together. So we are certainly excited for our first time visitors. Again, our virtual viewers, if you can just hashtag welcome to the church that cares. We love you. We are excited that you've decided to meet us here to bless the name of the Lord together. And I promise you that you will not be disappointed. We thank the Lord today with the clapping of the hands and we give the Lord the fruit of our lips. We just exalt Jesus Christ together, right where you are, if you're in your living rooms or your bedrooms, or even on your jobs this morning, the Lord is with you, and he is looking to bless you right where you are. Lift your hands, all ye people, and let us decree and declare with a voice of triumph. With one voice, we lift our our hands and our voices to our King. God, we just love you this morning. We bless you. We give you praise. Our call to worship, if, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, hallelujah, for a people that understand that the Lord is on our side. God, we thank you that you are for us. God, we thank you that you are moving through us. God, we thank you that you are still God and God alone. That's it. Just clap your hands and let's just exalt the King of Kings. Let's celebrate Jesus Christ today. Let's continue to give him the fruit of our lips. God, we just exalt you today for you are God alone. If it had not been for the Lord, we wouldn't be here today. But guess what? We are alive with breath in our bodies and let everything and have breath. Praise the Lord. I need you this morning to bless the Lord because you're still here. I need you to bless the Lord because you still have breath in your body. I know things may not be perfect, but guess what? We serve a perfect God. Hallelujah. That's it. Let's just raise Jesus Christ this morning. Oh, God, just give him a hallelujah. Give him a high praise. I don't know what you've been through this week, but guess what? He caused you to triumph because you belong to him. Come on, just have a brief memory about where the Lord has brought you from. Have a brief flashback of the danger seen and unseen that you have arose from. Hallelujah. Just think back over your lives. And let's ask the question, how did we make it over? Over. We understand it was only because of the blood of Jesus that never, ever loses its power. I need you right there to give him a sound this morning. Give him a sound from your bellies. Give him a sound from your heart today. Come on, all we need is two or three. Let's just set this atmosphere that we receive everything that the Lord has for us. In this call to worship, all we need is two things this morning. He seeketh such that shall worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. I need an authentic people to give God an authentic praise. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we rest upon your power. Oh, God, we rest upon your promise. Oh, God, we rest upon your plan. Come on, just push right there. Push beyond your present circumstance. Why? Because he's still Christ in the midst of the crisis. Come on, I know that we're in a pandemic, but guess what? We are still here, and our king still reigns. Hallelujah. He knows the plans that he has towards us, and they are good and out of evil to bring us to that expected end. How many have come this morning with expectation? I still believe God. Is there anyone today 
that still believes God in spite of what you see. You still believe God. Come on, by faith, there's pressing right there that we still believe God in spite of what's going on in our country. We still believe God in spite of all the turmoil. We still believe God in spite of the crisis. We still believe God. Come on. I need you by faith to decree and declare that God is still moving in your lives. Come on. Just worship him right there. Just give him what he's due this morning. God, we just love you. We pour out a love offering to you because you are God and God alone. Come on. Just let God just arise and let the enemy ha, all by shot be scattered. Come on. I need you to open up your miles and let's decree in this atmosphere that our God is still God. Come on, just push in his presence for a few moments. Oh God, come on, just give him the fruit of your lips. Give him what he's due today. God is exalted in this space where we're in. I know this is a peculiar time, but guess what? We are peculiar people. We are a royal generation. Come on, I need the royal people to please come on and stand up this morning. Come on, decree and declare that God is still God. Come on, stand on your feet right where you are and shake off the dust of the week. And let's just decree decree that God is God and God alone. I need you to open up your mouths and continue to push and press beyond what you are experiencing. Why? Because what you see is just temporary. Oh God, and what we don't see is eternal. Come on, that's it. Come on, push in that moment. Come on, press right there. Press in to his presence. Press in to his promise. Come on, just push for a little while longer. We're going to shift the trajectory of Dixwell Avenue. Why? Because when God's people speak, things have a shot, have to shift and things have to happen. See, something happens with the power of your voice. So I need you to decree in this atmosphere exactly what you're looking for. God to do. I need you right there to be the instrument of your own deliverance. Huh? Who be the instrument of your own purpose? Come on and push right there in this moment. Hallelujah. Push past everything where we're going through and believe that God is still God. God still reigns. He's still who he is. Oh, God, his promises are still good. How many today are believing for a fourth quarter win? Come on, we're just believing for the Hail Mary to come in. That's a football term for those who don't know it, that God can intercede. Who by shot? I feel the Holy Spirit today that God can intercede in spite of what it looks like, that he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly. This is faith talking above all that you can ask or think. Why? Because the power lives with inside of you. I need you to put your hands on yourself and remind the enemy that you are still a winner. Come on, remind the enemy that you still are on the Lord's side. Remind everything that's trying to attack you that you are still in the winning business. Come on, I need you to press in right now for your families. Press in for your children. Press in for your community. Come on, press in for your country. Come on, press in even for your circumstances. Why? Because God is changing the trajectory of the moment. We're in a space that the country hasn't seen in over 100 years. But guess what? The Christian faith has never been as strong as it is now. Woo, my Savior, my God, we are the generation that will seek the Lord. We are the generation that will pour out the love offering to him. Why? Because he wants us to seek his face and not his hand. In this hour, as we worship him, we're going to move, but I want us to be encouraged in this space. Virtual viewers, I need you to clap your hands right where you are. I need you to declare all over your home all over your bodies, all over your finances, that it is well with my soul. We're going to praise the Lord until times get better. Woo. We're going to praise the Lord until times get better. Woo. We're going to praise the Lord until times get better. We're going to clap in jubilee until times get better. Why? Because we know that our God sits high it looks low amongst his people. Clap your hands, all you people, and let us shout with the voice of triumph. At this time, we will call our dear elder Wydell Sims to please come with this morning's invocation. Clap your hands and celebrate the man of God as he comes. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, we bless his holy name. Praise the Lord, everybody. We come this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come to let the devil know that the blood still works. There's a, on the hill, there's a cross. And on the cross, there's blood for me and for you. On that hill, there's blood. And on that cross, it's for you and for me. And we come to decree and declare. We come to give God thanksgiving. We come to give God praise. We come to break the back of the enemy. Because the Bible says, for he who the sun set free is free indeed. And we're declaring freedom on today. We're declaring peace. We're declaring joy. We're declaring happiness. We want to see the hand of God move on our behalf. So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come once more again to the throne of grace. God, we bow down humbly before you, God, crying out, Lord, what must I do to be saved? So, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood over our children, oh God. We thank you for the blood over our family, someone's husband, someone's wife, oh God. We thank you for the blood, oh God, over our jobs, oh God, over our homes, for every situation that we're battling, oh God. Even in this, we know that God is great and that God is greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, his name is worthy to be praised. So, God, we thank you now for waking us up this morning, oh God, still yet closed in our right mind. God, we thank you for the activities and the use of our limbs. God, we thank you for food on our table, oh God. We thank you for clothes on our backs. We thank you, God, we woke up, we had shelter over our heads, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for how you allowed our children to go to and fro, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for how you keep a hedge of protection around them, oh God. We thank you, God, for you being God all by yourself, knowing that God, he is the greatest power and that we shall not be defeated. So God, today we come to lift our voice, oh God. We come to clap our hands, oh God. We come to raise our voice, oh God. God, we come to shout unto God with the voice of triumph, knowing that God is great, and God is greatly to be praised. So on today, I didn't come to play no games, but I come to bless him. I come to thank him for my life. I come to thank him for my health. I come to thank him for my strength. I come and thank him for making ways out of no way. I come thanking him for providing, for making ways. I thank God for my help. I thank him for bringing me, not some of the way, but he's brought me all the way. When I look back over my life and I see where the Lord has brought me from, I can't help but give God the praise. I thank God for the blood, oh God, that destroys the yoke of the enemy. I thank him for healing. I thank him for salvation. I thank him for deliverance. I thank him for the blood that's not of God. I thank God for destroying the yoke of the enemy. I thank him for coming in, for making ways out of nowhere. We thank God for those, oh God, that are in need, those that are in the hospital, God. Those ones that need healing, those ones that need a kidney, somebody needs deliverance, somebody needs heal from cancer, somebody needs heal from a blood transfusion, somebody needs God to touch them one more time. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we trust you now. We believe you, O oh God, for our trust lies in you, O oh God. Our hope depends on you, O oh God. God, we lean out to our own understanding, but in all thy ways, God, we learn to acknowledge you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, cover this house on today, O oh God. Let your word do what it comes to do, O oh God. God, let it heal. Let it set the captives free. Let it deliver, O oh God. Give us hope, oh God. Give us the peace that passes all understanding, oh God. You said that the joy of the Lord is our strength. God, give us that unspeakable joy, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I didn't come to wait for nobody on my row. I didn't come to wait for nobody that's on my pew that's sitting next to me. But I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. The scripture said, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And then he said, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And they said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. I said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us, let us exalt his name together. See, if we do it together, we'll make it better. Don't wait for me. Don't wait for her. Don't wait for him. But let's do it together. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
We count it done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the people of God say amen. And at this time, we will have my brother, a very capable singer, Elder Raymond Leslie, to come for our psalmist for today. Clap your hands as he comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Am I glad about it? Are you glad about it? Huh? We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give him the glory. We lift our hands to give him the praise. And we shall praise him for the rest of our days. Yes, we shall praise him for the rest of our day. Come on, stand to your feet on today. Come on and just give him some praise. The snow is coming, so you might as well do it. Mm -hmm. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give him the glory. We lift our hands to give him the praise. And we shall praise him for the rest of our days. And we will praise him for the rest of our days. Oh, come on, come on. Lift those hands. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We clap our hands in the sanctuary. We clap our hands to give him the glory. We clap our hands to give him the praise. And we will praise him for the rest of our days. Ooh, we shall praise him for the rest of our days. Come on, put those hands. Come on, I need to see those hands. We getting our exercise in today. Come on up a little bit. We lift our voice in the sanctuary. We lift our voice to give him the glory. We lift our voice to give him the praise. And we will praise him for the rest of our days. Yes, we shall praise him for the rest of our days. Jesus, we give you the praise. Emmanuel, we lift up your name. Heavenly Father, coming Messiah, and we will praise him for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise him for the rest of our days. Oh, yes, we will praise him for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise him for the rest of our days. Yes, Lord. Uh-huh. Yes, Lord, for the rest of our days. Yes. Ooh. Yes, Lord, for the rest of our days. Yes. Come on, can y'all say that with me? If you promise, yes, Lord, for the rest of my days. Yes. Hey. Oh, yes, Lord, for the rest of our days. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give him the glory. We lift our hands to give him the praise. And we will praise him for the rest of our days. Yes. Come on. Yes. Can I get a yes in the building? Come on. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your worship. Yes in the praise. Yes. Come on, that's all it takes. Yes. Uh-huh. Listen, we lift our voice in the sanctuary. I can't hear you. Come on, we lift our voice to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is your praise for real? Huh? Nobody knows your praise but you. Don't nobody know it but you. This is this time. You may be seated in the sanctuary. And we're really grateful to God for what he's been doing. He's been making ways. He's been taking care of us. He has been providing for us. 
Somebody's got a testimony in here about how God brought you through. You need to tell that thing. Somebody in here got a testimony of how God put food on your table and you didn't know how you was going to get it. And how he's also made ways for you and your family. Hello? Some of you, God has been keeping you and you ain't been talking to nobody. Hallelujah. But God wants you to turn around and say something to him today. He wants you to tell him how much you love him and how much you care for him and how much he's been making ways. You need to just adore him. Tell him something good. Tell him something sweet. Tell him something kind. Because, you know, I keep thinking and remembering just what God has been doing for us. I look at y'all and y'all look so good. You look healthy. You look nourished. You look strong. You look mighty. You look powerful. You look like you got wisdom. You look like you got an understanding. Hallelujah. Bro, I might have to flow where you at, man, because I was getting ready to go somewhere else, though. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The song that's in my heart right now, it says, wherever I go, I will worship you forever. Do you know that God is looking for somebody who's not going to choose an hour to serve him? Not a second, but he's looking for somebody who has made up in their mind that for God I live and for God I die. Because he has what? Died for us. Now, are you willing to give your life for him? And that's the key on today. We're here to get a word on how we can more, we can submit ourselves to him even the more. Amen. One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let him come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've gotten lazy and let the singers sing it. Come on. Open up your mouths. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Lord, I love you. Yes, we do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything that he's done in every way that he's made. For waking us up early this morning with the activities of our limbs and the breath in our body, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you with everything within me. Yes, sir. I love you, Lord. Yes, I do. Yes. Lord, I love you. Just hum it. Hum it. The Bible says that the Lord, the Holy Ghost, understands our moanings and our groanings. It, it goes places where words can't go. And right now, I believe there's some things that we haven't said that God is listening to right now. 
somebody that we're praying for, somebody that we got at the tip of our tongue, an issue that we have. And we're looking for God to speak to our great man of God today to give us a word from heaven that he is still blessing us, that he is still saving us, that he is still redirecting us. Huh? Lord, I love you. Surely, I love you. With everything in me, I love you. I really love you. Mm, and I thank you. With everything with me, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Mm -hmm. I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God some praise in here. Because if you really love him. Hallelujah. The song says, when everything I do, I worship you forever. Oh, you go, you, okay. We're just going to go ahead and call. Amen. God bless you tonight. Come on, clap your hands one more time. We thank God for letting the Lord know that we love him and how we adore him and how we worship him and how we honor him and how we bless his name. Because how many know if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side? I'm going to be reading the scripture for you on today, Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. And it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The Bible said that the just shall live by faith in the name of Jesus. At this time, clap your hands for our very fine pastor, our leader, our shepherd of this house, St. Matthew's Unison Free World Baptist Church. God bless you this morning. I'm going to be brief because we are in the audience of the King. He is worthy to be praised. Does anybody agree with me that the Lord is worthy to be praised? You know that all of your help comes from the Lord. I just want to stand And A few weeks ago, we had anointed oil for the congregants of St. Matthew's. If you did not get your oil, we still have oil left. If you're here this morning and you did not get a bottle of oil, it's uh, one per family, but you can see uh, one of the trustees or deacons as you leave. We will make sure that you can get yourself a bottle of oil. And if you are on our virtual audience and you did not get one, you can stop by the church during the week so that you can make sure that you can get the oil. It is here. So please make sure that you get that. And that's just a symbol of God's presence. So I want you to have that. It's been prayed over and we just trust God for blessing you through it. Amen. And I just want to acknowledge a couple of our uh, members, Sister Sharon Forbes and Sister Linda Spears, who very generously and faithfully made masks for uh, our own Elder Clayton, who is the uh, principal of Highville Charter School, and they made several hundred masks, so we thank God for them, 500 masks for them for safety, so we just acknowledge them and we thank God for them using their gifts, and we're going to turn it back into the hands now of our worship leader. Amen. Let's clap our hands one more time and celebrate Jesus this morning. We are moving into our announcements. Happy birthday from your church family. Happy belated birthday to Sister Vita Lee, 924. Happy belated 75th birthday to Sister Inez Myers, 925. 
Happy belated birthday to brother Marty Roberts, 926. Happy belated birthday to sister Lorraine Johnson, 926. Happy birthday to minister Rosa White. Happy birthday, 927. Happy birthday sister to sister Aretha Johnson, 927. Happy birthday to Sister Kim Troutman, 927. Happy birthday to Sister Sorella Griffin, 928. Happy birthday to Mother Patricia Roberts, 929. Happy birthday to Brother Shane Freeman, 929. And happy birthday to Sister Stephanie Roberts. 10-1, and happy birthday to brother Ronald Thomas, and that is on 10-2. Happy birthday from your church family. We are wishing you a tremendous birthday and a phenomenal year to come. Come on and wave your hands and happy birthday to all of our virtual viewers and happy birthday to everyone here with us during our outdoor service. Our fourth annual Julie Bell Cotton Food Drive in recognition of the founder of the food pantry to benefit the St. Matthew's Food Pantry, the church that cares. All donations are welcome. We are asking for non-perishable items that will make a Thanksgiving dinner. Monetary donations are also accepted. Please make checks payable to St. Matthew's UFWB Church. And in the memo section, please note food pantry. Also, you can drop off your donations on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Or you can call Brother Quinn Melton and he will meet you right here at the church. And again, thank you for your generosity and your liberal giving. For more information, please contact Trustee Irma Smith at 203-777-0472. Or again, Brother Quinn Melton at 203 203- 9086728. St. Matthew's, once again, UFWB Church, we have church apparel. So masks are still available in black and white, and we also have t-shirts available as well. Thank you again for your generosity and your liberal giving. Church news, what's happening now? St. Matthew's Church, as a part of the church that cares, Community Impact Partnership with Highville Charter School. Thank you, special thank you to Sister Sharon Forbes and Sister Linda Spearman for selflessly volunteering their time to complete the task of hand sewing 500 facial masks. They were age and gender specific. So I need you to celebrate them for their generosity, their selflessness, and they're giving. So on behalf of all the students, faculty, staff, and administration of Highville Charter School and the Mask Up Project, we thank you for your dedication and continued partnership. This Mask Up Project was sponsored by Shelly Sprague. So let's celebrate her. Once again, we have our principal here, none other than Elder Janet Clayton of Highville Charter School. So we thank you again for your initiative. Uh, as always, we rock the vote here at St. Matthews. I need all of our registered voters to please clap it up and let's celebrate Rock the Vote campaign for 2020. Again, we need everyone. I need you to look to your left, to the right. I need you to hashtag our virtual view to viewers. Please vote 2020. Please vote 2020. Be clear, my sisters and brothers, the next 50 years is predicated on this election. The next 50 years is predicated on this election. We are not telling you who to vote for. We are begging you to exercise your right to vote. Okay, I need you all to clap your hands and celebrate all the Rock the Voters here. If you have a sister 
or a brother, a family member who has not registered, there is still time. Just tell someone there's still time. Hashtag virtual viewers, there is still time. There has been over 198 judges that have been placed in this election, all right? So within the four years of this administration, over 100 and 98 judges have been placed on the bench. So I need you to check out your history. I need you to look into all the, the political agendas this year and please rock the vote. All right, so clap your hands once again. Let's celebrate that we have the power, the authority, and the insight that we will rock the vote 2020. Also, Brother Michael Beeman has lost his sister his funeral, her funeral rather, was, was today or yesterday, excuse me, please let's pray for Brother Beeman as again, everyone who has lost family members, please let's pray for their comfort, their encouragement as the Lord continues to push through and pass all bereavement. So again, we love you, our brothers and sisters, and we are thankful for you being here once again to celebrate Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is time to give. Give and it shall be given back to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. We have three ways to give, one being cash app at dollar sign S-M-U-F-W-B Church. The second PayPal, www.paypal.me forward slash SM Church Offering. And while within the PayPal, please search SM Church Offering 100 at gmail.com. Again, the Sunday service, mail or drop-off location right here, St. Matthew's UFWB Church, 400 Dixwell Avenue in New Haven. Debit and credit cards are accepted. Again, you can either call Trustee Erica Bradley or Trustee Juanita Mazik. We thank you for your generosity and your liberal giving. Also, by way of announcement, our dear sister Mildred Nelson's funeral service will be held this Wednesday at 11 a.m. at Trinity Temple Church. Again, let's support and pray for our dear sister Renee Nelson and her family. And if you can, just reach out, give her a call, let her know that we are certainly the church that cares. At this time, we are preparing for our pastor. Let's clap it up for him. And let's just set the atmosphere as he is going to bring us the nourishment we need for the day. We celebrate none other than our dear pastor. Clap your hands for the greatest pastor on this side of heaven, none other than Elder Kevin C. Hardy. Clap it up for him. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this preaching moment. I thank you for allowing me and empowering me to preach your word with clarity, conviction, and with power, without limitation or distraction. Reach your people like only you can. And I thank you, O oh God, for changing, for uplifting, for encouraging and enlightening us through your word. We say yes and amen. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to go to a very familiar passage of scripture this morning. We're going to go to Ezekiel 37. I love the Lord because he knows exactly what we need to hear. I, last week, I had a couple of passages of scriptures that I wanted to broach this week. And as I spent time with the Lord, he's like, no, I want you to go here. And it reads, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around them, and behold, there they were, very many of, on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a sound and behold a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked and behold, there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came unto them and they lived and stood on their feet an exceeding great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. I want to lift this morning and I wanted to read all 14 uh, verses and I pray you'll meditate it on it this week. But I want to lift from the subject, God still gives victory in the valley. God still gives victory in the valley. It seems that both the sacred and the secular both mention valleys. There's a popular song called Peace in the Valley, written by Thomas Dorsey, sung by Mahalia Jackson, and even Elvis Presley had to get a turn singing that song, Peace in the Valley. But there's also a song by Ashford and Simpson that they wrote that was sung by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell called Ain't No Mountain High Enough and Ain't No Valley Low Enough to Keep Me From Getting to you. So both the sacred and the secular both talk about valleys. And it seems that the valley for many of us is an identifiable place, meaning that either we've already just come through one or we're dealing with a valley right now. A valley is defined as a low place or a low experience. And the Bible in my research deals with three different types of valleys. There is a deep valley. A deep valley is a place of deep emotional hurt or pain on the inside that sometimes we struggle with. And that's why God says in Psalms, he says, I will heal the brokenhearted and I will bind up your wounds for those deep valleys. Then there are dark valleys. Dark valleys are those scary low places. Those are hard to see. Those are the unknown or the unfamiliar places that provoke fear in us. We know that they're around because we know that David says in Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But this morning, I want to talk about a dry valley. Dry valleys are those low places that when we see something in our view, it ain't good. It's discouraging. It's frustrating because we know that it wasn't always like that. That's what makes it so difficult and what makes it dry is because we know that there was something there before what's happening now, but something drained it and something tried to wash it out. So I'm talking this morning to the drained folks. You don't got to raise your hand. You don't got to say, I'm talking to the people that are drained by something. I'm talking about the dry valleys. That's what I'm talking about this morning. God has a word. God still gives victory in the valley. 
I'm talking to the drained folks and I'm using Ezekiel's words because he wants me to let you know this morning through experience that God still gives victory in the valley. Thank you. Ezekiel, thank you for letting the church know those of us who are dealing with those dry valleys. Through this passage, I understand that a valley was never meant to have victory over us. A valley was never meant to have victory over us. Ezekiel is the prophet who is prophesying during the time of the uh, Babylonian exile, and he is sharing words that are still powerful to us today. Let me show you what we can glean from here. Through these 14 verses, I learned first that I'm valued. Can you put your hand on yourself and say, I'm valued? I might not always be valued by people, but I am always valued by God. He treats me with respect and honor because he values me. That's the first thing that God wanted to establish in this text because the first seven words he says is, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Now, what I love about God is God doesn't personally touch anything he doesn't value. He doesn't put his hand on anything he doesn't value. He may not always value what we do, but he always values us. So he tells Ezekiel, he says, the hand of God was upon me. And what God does is he puts his hand on us to stay. Nowhere in those 14 verses does he say he took his hand off. That ought to excite somebody to let them know that no matter what your valley experience, God's hand is resting on you. I thank God that he is touching me. His hand is on me. His hand is still on me. In the midst of my valley, his hand is still on me. What is so special about the hand being on me? I'm so glad that when God touches me and his hand is on me, he can pick me up. He can snatch me up. He can cover me. He can protect me. He can defend me. As long as the hand is on me, I can make it. So how are you going to make it through your valley? Because the hand of God is still on you. Put your hand on yourself and remind yourself, the hand of God is still on me. <laughs> still on me. He reminds me what his hand can do. You know the power of his hand. We even sing, I put it all in his hands. There's just everything because his hand is on me. I'm valued even in the valley because his hand symbolizes, this excited me the early this morning, his hand symbolizes his power and his presence. So when his hand is there, his power is there, and his presence is there, but what? When I dug deeper, it means is the hand of God means I've been picked to be delivered. In this text, it means I've been picked to be delivered. So when he says that my hand is on you, he's saying I picked you to deliver you from whatever you've been going through. So you need to put your hand on yourself and remind yourself, not only are you valued, but you've been picked. You might have been the last one to be picked for the basketball team. You might have been the last one to be picked for a sports thing. But God said, you've been picked to be delivered. So no matter what this valley is trying to hold me from, I've been picked to be delivered. No matter how long I've been dealing with it, I came with an APB bulletin. You've been picked this morning to be delivered. You've been picked to be snatched out of there. You've been picked to come out with more than you went in there for. You've been picked to be delivered because his hand is on me. I've been picked to be delivered. You want to know how the best way to be picked is to be handpicked. God handpicked me to be delivered. He put his hand in my direction and say, I picked you to snatch you out. That's why, although it's dry, you've been picked to be delivered. Put your hand on yourself and say, I've been picked to be delivered. I can't hear you. I want to hear you again. You need to tell hell and the devil everything that's been harassing you. I've been picked. 
in the midst of a pandemic, I've been picked. Why are you here? Because you've been picked to be delivered. Why are you still standing in your right mind? Because you've been picked. Why are you living and not? Because I've been picked to be delivered. This valley won't have victory over me. I've been picked to be delivered. Because God's hand is on me. I've been handpicked. He's still touching me. His hand is still on me. I might have to go through the process, but I've been picked to be delivered. That means the valley won't kill me. The process won't defeat me because I've been picked. What makes you put one foot in front of the other? Because I've been picked. What makes you lift your hands in the midst of everything that's going on? Because you know you've been picked. What makes you testify and say, I still believe God? Because I've been picked. What makes you leap in the midst of trouble? Because you know you've been picked. I've been picked for deliverance. Don't you know that the Bible says he will surround you with songs of deliverance? So what is God singing over me? Deliverance. God is singing deliverance. God is singing deliverance. God is singing deliverance. You are surrounded with the right thing. You are surrounded with God's deliverance. His hand is on you. He surrounded you with songs of deliverance. God says freedom. God says live. God says second chance. God says lift up your heads. God says you're healed. God said deliverance. God said who can come against you when I am for you? He said when the enemy comes in like a flood, I'll lift up a standard. God picked me to win. I will lead you to victory. God picked me to win. God picked me to be delivered. So why are you cast down? Lift up your head and let God arise because he picked me. Victory is all over me because God's hand is on me. God's hand represents victory. God's heart represents victory. God's soul is victory. God's word is victory. Hell may not like it, but God picked me. Everybody might not approve, but God picked me. You may have seen the story and the mistake, but God picked me. God put it this way. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he is not utterly cast down because he picked me. Why do I love him? Because he picked me. It's your turn for deliverance. Mm -hmm. Put your hand on yourself and say, I'm valued. Because he picked me for deliverance. I dare you out there in virtual land to type that in and say, he picked me for deliverance. And all those under the sound of my voice this week, the Bible says, what shall you say to these things? If God be for me, who can be against me? What makes you say that God is for me? Because he's Emmanuel. He's God with me. But he's also God in me because he picked me. My, 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 my. So what shall you say? What shall you say? To those things that are trying to harass you, those things that are trying to drain you and dry you out, say, God, pick me for deliverance. Why are you going to make it? Because God's hand is on you. I know you've been through. 
I know you're tired of the valley, but walk on through because God picked you. I would also tell you, That besides being valued, I hear the voice of God at just the right time. <laughs> now, it's one thing. I thank God for hearing his voice. But there are sometimes that are a little bit more critical than others. And by that I mean, because there are sometimes that this towel wants to get out of my hand because I want to throw it in. <laughs> but when you hear God's voice right at the right time, he's a right now God with the right now word. The Bible says my sheep hear my voice and another they will not follow. See, what the enemy fights us with is the observable, the things that we can see, circumstances, and overwhelming us in our valley experience. So what that means is look at verse 2. I want to be true to the text. I'm not making nothing up. Verse 2 says, there were many bones, and they weren't just dry. They were very dry. So I'm not making nothing up. It wasn't just a bad situation. It was very bad. Because have you ever been where you haven't just had one problem? You had a whole bunch of them. And the situation wasn't just bad. It was very bad. But then you had the nerve to get a word from the Lord. What I love about God is even when I'm in the valley, it can't stop his voice. Oh, my God. Somebody heard what I said. Even in the valley, it don't stop his voice. And see what happens when you're in the valley, if you know anything about it, when you begin to talk in the valley, it echoes. So the enemy don't like it because God's word is echoing in my spirit. It's echoing in my soul. God's word is echoing now because his voice still reaches me in the valley. So what he tries to do, let me continue to unpack this. So it reaches me in the valley. That's why I love him. And it comes just at the right time. And as I saw in verse 3, he calls Ezekiel, he says, son of man. He calls Ezekiel son of man several times. And what that means is he recognizes Ezekiel's humanity and intervenes. So when he knows that what we're dealing with is too much for us, that's when God says, now I'm going to start speaking. How do I know? Because he says son of man. Can these bones live? Have you ever been faced with some questions that you don't know the answer to? Some of you are facing some dry valleys and some questions you don't know the answer to. But God said, I recognize your humanity. And in the middle of that, what happens is I began to talk when your humanity can't meet the need. How do we know? Look at his track record. When hell said that I was going to go to hell because the blood of goats and sheep could not lo no longer do it, what Jesus said is prepare me a body. His words began to be the answer when my humanity could not meet the need. He began to say, prepare me a body. And then he said, so that condemnation does not eternally follow you around where you continue to have to do something for yourself to forgive yourself time and time again. He said, let me go to the cross and then say these three words. It is finished. No more goat, no more lamb, no more nothing. It 
is finished. So I need to let somebody know God is speaking something about your circumstance this morning. It is finished. But we can't stop there because I was excited about that. But I was even more excited when he got out of the grave and said, all power in heaven and in earth is in my hands. He not only had an answer for my sin, he had an answer for my life. He had an answer for my eternity. He had an answer for everything, past, present, and future, because it's settled, because it's finished. When my humanity didn't have an answer, his authority had an answer. When my humanity didn't have an answer, his authority had an answer. I need to tell you, whatever you're facing in the valley, his authority has the answer. His power has the answer. His voice has the answer. His word has the answer. Now that's going to excite some folk that know that you can't do it in and of yourself. That's the folks I'm talking about. Well, all you can do is shake your head. And he ain't upset when you say to him, Lord, you know. Sometimes I don't know, but I ain't never forgot that he knows all and can do all. When you're in the valley, there is nothing that your humanity is facing that his authority cannot handle. That's what you got to remember. There is nothing that your humanity is facing that his authority cannot handle. God kept on speaking. Ezekiel spoke in that third verse, I think it was. And then God goes on to speak the rest of the eleven. What I love about that is he knows what I'm facing, and he's got a lot to say about it. God is not quiet with what I'm dealing with. You need to be excited because God has something to say for you, and it will be for your good. God's voice reaches me in the valley, and it's for my good. He's got a lot to say. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me keep on unpacking this thing. Is this good to you? Put your hand on yourself and say, God still gets victory in the valley. Besides being valued, besides hearing his voice, God also gives me vision in the valley. The first couple of verses showed me something else, and we're going to be honest here. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but, but the first couple of verses, two and three, show me that the first thing that God is, besides putting his hand on me, is he is the savior of the scattered. He is the savior of the scattered. So what do I mean? These bones weren't just dry. These bones were scattered. So I'm talking to the folk now that are dealing with something that's scattered. Your thoughts may be scattered. Your mind might be scattered. Your emotions might be scattered. Your finances might be scattered. Your health might be scattered. Your family might be scattered. Your faith might be scattered. He is the savior of the scattered. There is nothing that's scattered that God can't save. Not only were the bones dry, but they were all over the place. Do you have anything that's all over the place? Anything that has fallen out of place, God is the Savior. He is the Savior of it. Not only, he said, not only will I refresh what was dry, I will restore what was scattered? 
I will refresh what was dry and restore what was scattered. So if it's your mind, it will be restored. If it's your finances, it will be restored. If it's your family, it will be restored. If it's your health, it will be restored. Whatever has fallen out of place, whatever has fallen out of sync, whatever has gotten out of order, would anybody be honest in here? You don't got to raise your hand unless you want to wave your hand. But is anybody here honest to say, I got a few things that are out of place? I got a few things that I need God to put in order. I got a few emotions that I need God to straighten out. He is the savior of the scattered. I will straighten it out. I will fix it. I will make it right. I will do it. You will not die in the valley because I'm bringing together the scattered pieces. I am the savior of the scattered. Talk to your mind. God is restoring it. Talk to your body. God is restoring it. Talk to your relationship. God is restoring it. Talk to your finances. God is restoring it. Talk to your faith. God is restoring it. You will not die in the valley with scattered pieces. Come back together. I'm talking to some folks who will be honest enough to say somehow life has made some things fall out of place, get out of order. But God said, I'm the Savior. I'm the Savior who's straightening stuff out. I'm the Savior who's putting order back. I'm the Savior who's bringing back the pieces. After being the savior of the scattered, part of his vision is that verses 6, 7, and 8 talk about a noise and a sound of coming together of the bones and the tissue and the sinews and the skin. And some things happen, but that's not all. Now, that is in the first half of the chapter. So what I'm saying to you is the Lord says, we can't stop halfway through sometimes if things get a little bit better we're like thank you lord and i'm not saying we shouldn't be grateful but we can't let the valley fool us into thinking that god's vision for us is incomplete god's vision for us is complete it's not incomplete so he didn't stop after he heard some noise so some of you have heard some stuff getting back together. You have heard, saw God do some stuff, but I came to let you know that he is not finished. He's not finished working with you in the valley. Let me prove it to you. So put your hand on yourself and declare these words. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him do it all. Let him finish. The Bible says he who begun a good work in you shall be sure to complete it. Let him finish. When I go past verse 8, he begins to say, how do I know that the vision was incomplete up to 7? Because verse 8 through 14, he also says, I will open what has been closed. He says, I will cause you to come up from where you are. Now, I'm talking to some people that are tired of being on, on ground level. Some of you are tired of being on ground level. He said, I'm going to cause you to step up from where you are. So it is time to step up from where you were. It's time to take the step up. I wish you move your foot like you were stepping up out of where you were. It's time to step up and step over. Step up and step over. It's time to step up and step over. He says, 
You can't stay on ground level. Step up, step over. He also says, you shall know that I am the creator of all, the God of all, the Lord of all, all-powerful God, omnipotent God, omnipresent God. And this is what I love. Not only is he powerful, but that term Lord there means I will also add some grace and mercy to it. So along with his power comes his grace and mercy. So as I'm stepping up and stepping over, God said, not only will I help you up, I'm giving you some grace and mercy as you step up and step over. So you're not going to come up without his grace and mercy. You're not going to come over without his grace and mercy. God, the all-powerful God. And finally, I would tell you, as I close, he said, I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. What I realized is, he does not want you coming out of the valley with mistaken identity. So let me tell you what I mean. The bones had come together. The muscle and the flesh had come together. There was even a skin on it. So they had come together, but there was nothing on the inside of it. So God says, I don't want you coming out of the valley like a shell when you are a vessel. A shell looks good on the outside. It has everything that it needs on the outside, but it's empty on the inside. But I thank God that I'm coming out of this valley with something on the inside, something that makes me thank God, that makes me know that God is real. It's the spirit of God. I'm a vessel of the Holy Ghost. Know that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and he has put treasures in earthen vessels, I have God's spirit on the inside of me. So when I come out of this, I'm not going to come out as a shell, just looking all right. But I'm going to come out being all right because God's spirit says live. God's spirit says triumph. God's spirit says wholeness. God's spirit says victory. I got something on the inside that says I'm not a shell. I might have went in like a shell, but I'm coming out with my shoulders back with a walk and a talk that says I'm a vessel of God, chosen. Remember I told you I'm a vessel because he picked me. You're holding something. A vessel is a container. It's got something precious in it. You are not walking around empty. God put himself in you. He said, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. So I'm not coming out of the valley as a shell. I'm coming out as a vessel. Put your hand on yourself and say, I am not a shell. I am a vessel. The spirit of God rests in me. I am a vessel. The spirit of God lives in me. I am a vessel because he picked me. One last time, I am not a shell. Let that be a gas station. Save the shells for the beach. I am not a shell. I am a vessel. They got enough shells on the beach. They don't need me to be one. I'm a vessel set aside to contain the precious cargo of the Holy Ghost.
So you will have victory in the valley. You will still have victory in the valley because you are valued because his voice and his vision for you is not complete. And you need to know the vision is you're a vessel. You're a vessel. What was dry will be restored. You're a vessel. What was scattered will be brought back together. Because God wants you to know that he alone is the all-supreme, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving God. He is the Lord. And he is the one that said I'm a vessel. He put me back together so he could put something in me. Anybody else tired of leaking? You tired of leaking? You tired of it leaking out? You tired? God is sealing the vessel. My God. So that when he fills you, it will stay. Let's prophesy to ourselves and say, this is the season where the anointing will stay. This is the season where my joy will stay. This is the season where my faith will stay. This is the season where my hope will stay. This is the season where it will stay. It will not leak out. It will stay. Because I'm a vessel. And so are you. Elder Ward, will you just do a little bit of in the name of Jesus? We have the victory. Hands lifted. We're going to spend a few moments in worship. I'm done. But can you one more time say for me, God is still giving me victory in the valley. In the name of Jesus. Hands in up. the name of Jesus. We have the victory. To read. Oh, hands in up, the everyone, name please. Of Jesus, in that name called Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, tell me who can stand. Before us, yes, yes, yes. when we when we call on that great name, Jesus, call His name, Jesus, precious, precious, Jesus, Jesus. we have we have the victory. One more time, Elder. In the name of Jesus. Let, let's keep this worship moment going. Let's keep these Jesus. hands up. Even if you're virtual. We have the victory. In the oh, name. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name of Jesus. Satan. Satan. You have to flee. Yes. Oh, 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 tell me, tell me, tell me who can stand before me when we call on, call on that great, that great name, Jesus, 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 precious, oh, precious Jesus, we have we have the victory. Keep those hands up. Tell me God, I thank you when I declare and decree that everyone under the sound of my voice and every family represented, we have the victory. Even in the dry valley, we have the victory. 
Jesus. We have the victory. Jesus. Because yes. you have picked us Jesus. for deliverance. We Your hand is on us. Therefore, we declare, in spite of what circumstances say, that we have the victory in Jesus' name. Lift up your heads, all you people, and be lifted up. You have the victory. Be healed. Be whole. Be encouraged. Be strengthened. You have the victory. Get your new outlook. You have the victory. Get your peace. You have the victory. Get your joy. You have the victory. Hold on to your strength. You have the victory. Tell your family you have the victory. Put your hand on yourself and say, I have the victory. the victory. If you are out of church and do not know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, now is the time that you can come on out of the valley. If you come on out of the valley, the Lord wants to change you from being a shell to a vessel. Just looking good on the outside, but empty on the inside. Smiling, but absent of your fullness of joy. He has chosen you. He has picked you to deliver you. If that's you and you want to give your heart to Jesus Christ, come now. If you're at home, type your name in the chat so that we'll know. You can also email me at pastorhardy400 at icloud.com. And if it's you and you're already a believer, but you want to give your hand to this church, you want to become a member of this church, now is the time you can do that as well. If that's you, type your name in the chat and come on and join this church. We're not a perfect church, but we love the Lord. And we declare that we are the church that cares. If that was you and you gave your heart to Jesus, we have this simple prayer that we ask you to say with us. Dear God, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. You said in your word that if I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that you raised him from the dead, I would be saved. I believe it and I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I am now saved. Thank you for forgiving me, Lord. Thank you for loving me. We will walk this Christian journey together. And is there anyone that's here under the tent or the surrounding areas that wants to come or give your heart to Jesus Christ to come to join this church. We will meet you. Now is the time. Is there one who would come? Come now. You can even raise your hand right where you are. We'll come to you. If that's you, we'll come to you. Is there one? Let's say that together. We have, we have the victory. Twice more. We have, we have the victory. One more time. We have the victory. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Know that you are blessed coming in and even more blessed coming out because you have heard the word of the Lord. And I declare again with you that God is still giving us victory in the valleys. He is still our God, omnipotent and all-powerful and omnipresent. Be blessed and have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week. Know that God is for us and because he is for us, who can be against us? What shall we say to these things? God is for us, and there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. I'm encouraged because he picked me. Yes, he did.